forest to see Miss G. She lives in a house that is mostly green, except for the chimney and windows and walls, and one or two places just down the halls, and filled with rabbits and newts and snails, and fat little puppies that wag their tails, and a whale and a tiger and elephants too. Well, maybe not elephants. Hi. We have nature sounds at HodgePodge Lodge today. Several different kinds of birds that make interesting noises. And a cute little kitten that's almost a cat. I hope she's going to purr for us. And another little animal that's hiding in a wastebasket. What kind of nature sounds can you hear at your house right now? Wendy, what nature sounds do you think of when I say that? combination of words. I think of ducks and geese. Ducks and geese. And we have a duck over here. He's being very quiet right now. What do they say? Quack. And what do, what do geese say? I, I'm not sure. I think they say something like a duck. I'm not sure. A little louder. They say honk, honk, honk. And they yeah. can also hiss. Can you think of an animal that hisses, Larry? Snake. Right. And some people are very scared of snakes because they don't understand snakes and they don't understand the noises that snakes make. <laughs> they think they're very scary. But I thought it'd be a good idea if we talked about some of the noises, because if you understand noises, then you won't be afraid of them, right? What's one loud noise that some people, even grown-ups, are afraid of? That's a nature noise. Um, it's um, a coyote. Like, you can hear them go, woo, through a what? the night. A coyote, I think. A coyote. Oh, yeah. Once I was scared of a coyote. Oh, my goodness. Aurora's doing his acrobatics there. He, sometimes he thinks he's in the circus and he hangs on the edge of the table. <laughs> he doesn't make much noise, but he does funny tricks for us sometimes. A coyote. Once when I was on a camping trip down in Mexico and I was sleeping out in the desert on a rainy night, I heard the coyotes howling and I didn't know there were coyotes down there. And that made me very scared until I woke up in the morning and asked somebody, and they told me what they were. So it's good to know the noises where you are, so you'll know what to expect. Have you ever been afraid of a noise, Larry? Uh, a few times. Um, I can't remember when, but like, once I was um, sleeping, and all of a sudden, um, my brother accidentally dropped the book. Oh, right. An unexpected noise can be scary. <laughs> How about in the summertime when we have thunderstorms? Thunder. Thunder is scary and lightning sometimes too. I uh, used to have a neighbor, an old man named Tommy, who was afraid of thunder. And he would always come down the road when there was a thunderstorm to our house because he was afraid to be alone when there was a thunderstorm. But if you understand why thunder happens, then you won't be scared. I got scared once. I what? had a bad dream and I woke up and the refrigerator was sounding and you could hear it. Oh, just making a funny noise. <laughs> well, let's talk about nature noises. Well, thunder's a nature noise. A refrigerator's not a nature noise. <laughs> There's one of our birds making a nature noise. I want you children to figure out, try to figure out what that bird is. And here is our old friend, the pullet. She's making lots of different kinds of noises. You can hear her pecking. At the nuts. At, the, at some of Aurora sunflower seeds and sometimes she scratches. She's been doing a lot of scratching today, and she scratched sunflower seeds all over the rug. But that's how she finds her food. And when she gets a little bigger and starts laying eggs, she'll make another, a real cackling noise to let the whole world know that she laid an egg. Right? Pussy, are you going to make any noises? I can feel her heart beating. That's sometimes if you're scared your heart yeah. beats loud enough yeah. for you to hear. <laughs> How does it sound, Wendy? It's, it sounds like a bump. Bump, 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 bump. Yeah. <laughs> One time I went um, to the haunted house. It was for Halloween. And I went inside and I was reading the whole big line and the lights were off. And it was bumping to the and I could hear my heart beating. <laughs> but when you, when you go to a haunted house on purpose, you know it's just you're sort of a way to have fun, isn't it? <laughs> 
Uh, you want to hold the kitten a minute, Wendy, while I get out this bird over here? Maybe I'll get this one out first, since it's making so much noise. No time. And see if you can figure out what it is. That is a very nice noise. It's made two kinds of noises. We made the one noise while it was sitting in the cage, and it made a noise just then. What, what, do, you think it, what do you think it's trying to tell me? Daddy doesn't like your hold. <laughs> right. Let go. <laughs> now, I'll give you a few hints on how to tell the name of this. This bird, it has the same name as a little furry animal that some people have for a pet. And it's not a hamster, and it's not a mouse. What other little furry animal does somebody look? Dogs, cats. Littler than that. Real little, like a hamster? Yeah, right, right. Um, it has two names. I know. I can't think Gerbils. of any. Gerbils? It starts with the same name, the same letter as gerbil. What's on that? It's a little bigger than a gerbil, this animal I'm thinking of. A guinea pig? Right. You know what guinea pigs look like. Well, this is a guinea, a guinea hen. There's another, another kind of bird named guinea. Well, you, if you have a whole lot of them together, you call them guinea fowl. One of them is a guinea hen or a guinea cock. I'm not sure whether this is a male or a female. But it's uh, now that I'm holding it, it's being very quiet, isn't it? Would you like to pat a guinea? Oh, come on. He's making another nature noise, flapping his wings. Um, they have all, sort of all animals, they have, like, they have um, feet, like they're old. Yeah. Like old, they're old. Yeah. <laughs> well, this guinea and uh, the duck that we're going to look at in a minute and some of the other birds that I have belong to my friend Jackie Hyatt. Mrs. Hyatt has a whole menagerie at her house. You know what that means? I think it means a lot of animals. A whole bunch of animals. She just loves animals, and she loves children, too. And she has lots of animals so that her children can enjoy them, and all the children in the neighborhood can enjoy them, too. Are, are these feathers for protection? Like, yes. If other animals like to eat it, um, it can fly down or up the tree? And it looks like right. That's how. That's part, one way it protects itself. It gets up in a tree, and they make that loud noise that you heard while it was in the cage to chase, uh, when anything bothers it at night, if a fox comes after it or if a burglar comes to a farm and there's guinea, there are guineas up in the tree, they chase away the burglars what, and wake up the farmer. What is that red thing there, Joe? Well, that's called a wattle. You and know, roosters horn. have those, too, and, and turkeys. And that horn, you want to feel that? You'd think it looks like it might be soft, but it's not. It's hard. It's hard. That's something special that guineas have. And I like these funny little feathers here that look like hair. Feathers? <laughs> yes, but they're special feathers that look like little hairs. I like these perfect dyed skin. Yeah, I think that's pretty. There's a feather you can have for a souvenir, Wendy. And if you look very closely, you can see his ear. It's just a, like a little hole there yeah. with a few little, little feathers. Hairs. Right, that's his ear. And this white skin is, makes him look sort of bald on his head, doesn't yeah. it? He has eyelashes. Eyelashes. I never met a bird with eyelashes before. He certainly does, Wendy. What a good observation. And several different kinds of feathers. His neck feathers are different from his back feathers. And he's mostly White. feathers. Some people raise them to eat and go to a fancy restaurant and have breast of guinea hen under glass. Ew. <laughs> well, there's that noisy chicken again, scratching. I like these white feathers here. Yes, some guineas are all white. They don't have the polka dots at all. And you can tell it's in a relative, <laughs> a relative of a chicken if, by looking at its feet, like Wendy said. It's feet that are, they look sort of old and dirty. Because this all, all animals, like, um, well, I think some do, you have long nails. Right, well, they need those. You watch how, how the pullet scratches the seeds around. The guinea scratches the ground, too, to find its food. <laughs> there are our friends, the turtle doves, making funny little noises. Sounds like they're hailing. Sounds like they're talking to Aurora. <laughs> <laughs> can, 
Can you un can you say put words to what they're saying? Yeah, I think. I don't like you. Something like that. Who I, cooks for I you? I don't like you. I, <laughs> I don't like you. It sounds like they're saying, I don't Get like away you. from here. <laughs> <laughs> and they do a little dance while they're singing too, which is nice. Oh, I want to take a last pat of the guinea. Feel how thick the feathers are before we put them. Camel away. It's really pretty heavy. One guinea. Here's a feather for you, Larry. You can have a souvenir. Maybe that'd be a good, good feather to try your friends on and see if they can recognize a feather, a polka dot feather. Well, chicken. How about getting off the duck's cage so we can take a look at the duck? The chicken's wings make sounds too when it flew. Mrs. Hyatt has lots of different kinds of ducks. She has Muscovy ducks. They have red, eye, red skin around their eyes. And she has mallard ducks, like the wild ducks. And she has this one, and he's an Indian runner duck. And his name is Deacon. And he stands up tall and straight. I thought he might like a drink because he's been in the cage for a while. He wants some water. Have a kind of hand that's funny with the feet. I guess he likes some water. <laughs> right, and another noise. A, n a duck dabbling in the water makes a different kind of noise. Help me have this funny looking feet. Well, where does he spend a lot of his time? I think ponds. water. In the water, ponds and rivers and lakes. And uh, if you put a pan of water in his pen, I'm drink sure Mrs. Hyatt, he'll drink it up, he'll jump in it and take a bath. So that's why he, he how he uses his webbed feet. Can we touch them? Sure, sure. It's Carol, so passing them over. He's not nearly as noisy as the guinea, is he? Oh, he hasn't gone. even quacked for us yet. Aren't you going to quack for us? Quack, quack. <laughs> I can see he has little sharp teeth or Look, something. He yeah. sort of puts himself in a circle, doesn't he? Look how he's making himself into a circle. Maybe that's a way he's, he thinks he's going to hide and that we won't see him. I never noticed a duck do that before, and he can do that because he has such a long neck. He's, he is all different colors. He's black in here and brown and then white. Yeah. Oh, he made a little quack. I wonder what would happen if I let him go very gently. Did you sit in my lap? No. no. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> he fell off the table, and he's flapping his wings, and the chicken is, thinks he's a friend to play with. Can I go get the chicken? Well, let's wait till the duck gets back over here close to us so I can go catch him. The chicken thinks he's a new friend to play with. <laughs> Listen to his quack. And here comes the chicken. See how he stands up straight, flaps his wings. Yeah, like Most ducks don't have those like, long necks. And wags his tail. I see a couple things we forgot to check out on him. Let me go catch him and we'll take a look at the at Can his I tail. The chicken? Uh, the chicken will be all right. Just let's. That was nice because we got a chance to see how a duck walks. And I forgot to show you his tail. Whoops. See how his tail curls? Oh, I have a question. How do you, how do you tell from if it's a girl? Well, if it uh, has this curl on its tail, it's a boy, a drake. That's what you call a, a father duck. Can you reach over and feel that little curl? It only has one little curl. Well, well, several feathers, but they all curl. Because sometimes you might have two. They're rough feeling. Yeah, right. And his nose right here on his bill is interesting too, where his nostrils come out. I know, he's got out. a little circle there. And his ear is hidden under his feathers here. We can't see it like we could the guineas. All birds have so pretty eyes. Don't they, though? Well, let the chicken talk to the duck for a few minutes. Let's us go over to the discovery table and take a close look at the ducks. Laura's waiting for us there. Uh 
know, before we take a look at the doves, I just heard something around my neck that Larry's mother lent me to wear today because it's so pretty. Listen to that. A beautiful necklace that her friend Paula Meshikow sent her from Los Angeles, California. Made out of, um, where did she find these things, Larry? From the beach. Shells along the beach. This is a scallop shell, we think, but we don't know what these are. If you use your imagination, the, on the scallop shell, it looks like a face laughing or something. <laughs> yes, you can look at nature things and use your imagination. That's a good idea, Wendy. And put them together with a little string, if you know how to do macrame, and have nice jewelry. But don't let your imagination run away with you when you hear noises in the night. Maybe if you're out camping and lying in your tent, you might hear little things pattering in the leaves. What might they be? Mice or something. Mice, right. A lot of mice in the woods run around at night. I, I had, like, I have dreams and I, when I wake up, I get... I let my ima imagination run, and I think somebody's going to come up the stairs. <laughs> Right, all you have to do is understand and know what kind of noises are likely to be where you are. Or you won't get scared. And then you won't get scared, right. And you know that a deer running through the woods at night... Making what, a tramping noise. Make a tramping noise in the leaves. Don't you want to get back on your perch, Aurora, and show us what kind of noises you can make? Sometimes I can get Aurora to make a sound if I pretend I'm calling the birds. Let's try it. Psh, 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 psh. Good, Aurora. Hello, Aurora. How do you like that? Hello, Aurora. Are you jealous because we've been talking to all these other animals today? Hi, Aurora. You're a good boy. Hello. Hello. I think it's very calm. Hello. Well, you try yours. Okay. Hi there. Larry, you better try while he's in a talkative mood. Hi, Aurora. Aurora. <laughs> Well, I think we just lost our talk with the movie. Well, that's pretty good for him. He usually just stays very quiet and watches what we're doing. Okay, Aurora, is it all right if we get a dove out now? Okay? You can eat. The doves are very quiet. They don't make lots of funny noises. They make like howling sounds. Well, cooing. Cooing is more like it. And these are albino doves, except their eyes. Albinos usually have pink eyes. What color are these? They're um, green, and it looks like a peach and a red. Very pretty, and a pink bill, and... They have pink, reddish pink feet. And beautiful pink feet. Would you like to pat a dove? They're so soft, and their head gave that little, mm -hmm. little bar. Have that's, you ever raised... Excuse me, Larry. That's the only beak I've ever seen on a bird that's really skinny and yeah. not colored. Right. See, birds use their beaks for different things. Don't you want to pat the, pat the dove? Sit back and let Larry have a chance. That's right. They're so soft. Right. Now, you can tell this, this is some of the dove's food scattered around here, these little tiny seeds. Do they eat poly seeds? No, I don't think they can manage sunflower seeds. So all they need is a little seeds and water, and how they make you, nice, quiet noises. How can you tell if it's a girl or a boy? Well, you just sort of have to watch and see which one I is... Think, like, during the spring, they'll lay in During the spring the mating day. season, you'll see the male. If you have a pair, he'll be doing his little dance and cooing to the female. And then sooner or later, she'll try to build a nest and lay an egg. Okay? Right? She so soft. <laughs> But a dove, we've had, what kind of birds have we had so far? Guinea. 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 And a duck, I think. Guinea a and a duck. And a duck. And a dove. And a aurora. And aurora. And one more. A hen. A hen. <laughs> Five different kinds of birds at Hodgepodge Lodge today. And just remember that all these birds, even though they're all tame now, they're all living with people somewhere in the world, there's still wild guineas and wild ducks and wild chickens and wild doves. We even have a kind of wild dove around here. You know what I wish I could do? What? I wish we could find that surprise to see the later. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Aurora, would you like to see the surprise? That's funny, isn't it? We're playing a trick on Wendy and keeping one surprise hidden. Right. The chick are the chicken and the duck getting to be friends? Yeah. 
Well, let's look over here in the wastebasket and see the surprise. A guinea pig. A guinea pig. And it's a baby guinea pig. It's only about half grown. This came from Mrs. Hyatt's house, too. She took me. She opened the cellar door when I went over to borrow these animals today. And guess what was standing on the top step? A guinea pig. A baby goat. <laughs> <laughs> She said it was born during the cold weather, so she had to bring it in the house and keep it in the cellar and feed it with a bottle. And then she took me down the cellar, and that's where the doves were, and lots of guinea pigs. And outside she has two sheep, one horse, one pony, one donkey, 50 rabbits, several goats, a St. Bernard. Right, dove, that's where you live, isn't it, where all those animals are? Can I help you? Up in the attic she has nine rabbits. Yes, why don't you cuddle the guinea pig and see if you can make it say something? Because so far, it's been very quiet. Guinea pigs make a lot of noise when they fight. Snuggle it up and pretend you're its mother. Speak up, guinea pig. <laughs> How are you at uh, making guinea pigs talk? <laughs> Maybe it's hungry. Let's try it on a piece of carrot. Maybe that'll give it something to talk about. Can you pick some carrots? Oh, sure. Put it back up here and let it eat, and then maybe we can, Larry can try making it talk. They're scared <laughs> to go any place. Guinea pigs are pretty quiet, Pats, and rabbits are, too. Rabbits never make any noise unless they're fighting or unless they're scared. Here. Didn't your mother teach you how to eat carrots yet? Good. I think she's a little nervous. <laughs> Listen, you maybe even hear a gnawing noise. Crunch, crunch, yeah. crunch. These guinea pigs, they have pink skin. My hamster, she is brown. Well, that's no, neat. not brown, purple. Purple skin? Uh-huh. Mm. Mrs. Hyatt has hamsters, too. I forgot to tell you about that. They live in a sort of apartment house. I want her to come and visit someday and bring her baby goat. Is that good? Nice, fresh carrot. Very good for your eyes. <laughs> Think you'll know a guinea the next time you hear one? Yeah. Good. And if you hear it in the middle of the night, you won't be scared. <laughs> you can see why farmers and other people keep them for watchdogs. Because they make a lot of noise if a robber's coming. Right. And if you hear a noise like a dove, but it's out in the woods in the springtime. I feel like an owl. It could be an owl. But if it's in the daytime, it's probably a morning dove, which is a wild relative of these doves. My aunt has this in the morning. Yeah. And that's a tricky word because th they sing in the morning, but they're named after their sound, which is a sad sound. You know, like people are in mourning when, when something yeah. sad happens. M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. That's... They say stop, yeah. And they're all different colors. Right. This one had... This one's mother had curly hair and his father had straight hair, so it's sort of half and half. Yeah. Some, different color. There's some really shaggy ones with hair over their eyes. Is that a good carrot? They look very cute when they nibble out. Mm -hmm. Let's think of the ways, the different ways that animals can make sounds. They Chewing. Can. Chewing. Flapping their wings. And flapping their wings. And what was Scratching. It? Scratching for food. And eating. Right. And sometimes if you're out west, you might hear an elk rubbing its horn, yeah. two elks fighting and banging their horns together. Or if they Mice crumbling up in the leaves. <laughs> right, right. Lots of different ways. Sometimes when I'm walking in the woods, I hear a nature noise that isn't made by an animal. And sometimes it fools me. I'll hear a squeaking sound over my head. And I'll look up and I'll see two tree branches rubbing together in the wind. And it makes a funny squeak. So I call that a tree squeak. <laughs> and some people think it's a kind of bird. And then there are frogs. Yeah, frogs have little Lots of different frogs. You can tell frogs apart by the noises they make. And there are different kinds of insects that make noises. Remember the cicadas we had? Yeah. We have every 17 years. They make a lot of noise. And how about bees? They hum. Yeah. They hum. Next time, um, I call them locusts. Next time the locusts <laughs> is coming around, I'll be 22. My goodness. <laughs> well, you want, you'll, when you'll. When the guinea pig chews, you can feel it up here. Can you? In the neck. If you touch them right here, I think they make you get scared, see? 
Some people, uh, ch some people's teeth chatter when they get scared. Yeah, yeah. And then that's a funny noise too. I, my hamsters do interesting things. They, they eat their food, and sometimes when they don't have time, they just stick it right in their jaw. Right here. Oh, in their pouch, right. Yeah. And then do they take it away and put it under their bedding somewhere? Sometimes, then sometimes when they're real hungry, they just gobble it up inside the mouth and you can't see. <laughs> And sometimes you think they don't have anything left to eat and they really have stacks of stuff yeah. hidden away under their bedding. Uh-oh. You can tell when they do that because their um, jaw gets real fat. Right, right. Chipmunks do that too. Let Larry have a turn. He hasn't had a turn to hold a guinea pig. What kind of animals do you have at your house that make noises, Larry? A dog. A dog, right. That's the one kind that most everybody knows, but uh, it can be scary too, can it? Especially a strange dog and that barks a lot and you don't know whether he's really means what he, that he's going to bite you or he's just saying hello or what. <laughs> You're setting back up on the table. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll have another carrot. Well, what's the loudest animal we've had at Hodgepodge Lodge today? The guinea. The guinea. Which animal has made noise the most times, would you the say? Dogs. The dogs. maybe, or the, maybe it's a tie between the guinea maybe, and the dogs. Yeah, because right. the guinea keeps on going. And which bird was the only one that could say anything we understood? Aurora. Aurora. Very proud of you, Aurora. I'll have to give you an extra head scratch. It's, it's like she has a little secret back there. <laughs> yes. Well, he's got enough room in his feathers to hide something. <laughs> I hope you both will go home and look for nature noises around your neighborhood. I don't expect you'll find a guinea, but you might find some of these other things. And I hope you will, too. Take a walk around the block and see how many different kinds of nature sounds you can hear. You'll probably hear the loudest ones first, like the wind. But listen, keep listening, and then you'll hear the little tiny sounds, like maybe a cricket or a little mouse squeaking. Uh, the, both kinds are interesting, the loudest and the tiniest noise. And remember, if you understand the noises, then you won't be afraid. Goodbye and come back soon again to Hodgepodge Lodge. made possible through funds contributed by members of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. Thank you.